Hi, I'm Amy, the designer at Peekaboo Pattern Shop, and today I've put together a quick video tutorial to show you how to sew the Blitz and Booties. These are a really adorable pair of little booties. They fit from newborns all the way up to adults. They're fully lined, so they're nice and cozy uh, on the inside. No exposed seams, and they have the option to add this little elastic in the back to make sure they really stay put on wiggly little feet and they just close with either a snap or Velcro. Let's get started. I have my pattern ready to go. I'm ready to cut my fabric now. So for the Blitz and Booties, you need to do an outer fabric and a lining fabric and then for each foot. So you're gonna end up with four of each piece. So for the front piece, you need two of these in your outer fabric, two in your lining, same thing for the sole. And then for the back, uh, the back piece you need to make sure you have mirror images so that the booty straps go opposite ways for your left and right foot. So what I like to do, I normally just fold my fabric in half and then cut out two at once and that will give you your left and right piece. So once you have your fabric cut, we're going to move on to step one, which is sewing the two front pieces together. So this is my main fabric, this is my lining, this fluffy Sherpa, so you can put right sides together just like this and then sew around the top edge. And then I like to trim this with some pinking shears that just really cuts down on any bulk. And then if you clip these little inward curves, that's going to help it lay nicer once you turn it right side out. So you can clip those and then turn it right side out and press it flat. And then the next thing you'll do is just top stitch right along here. And when you do that, if you're using knit, it's most likely gonna end up kind of wavy, but just press it after you're done top stitching and it will look great. So here's my other foot that I've already done my top stitching on. This is step two. So this is all ready to go. And then you're gonna do basically the same thing with the back booty pieces. So you're gonna have your outer fabric, that's my trucks, the lining, the Sherpa, I'm gonna sew all the way around here. And then I trim the whole edge with pinking shears. If you want, don't wanna do that, make sure you at least trim the corners and that'll help them lay really nicely. And then on this inside curve, if you wanna clip your seam allowance, it's not a huge deal, but it does make a little bit of a difference. And we're gonna turn it right side out. And you'll go and press it flat and then top stitch around the edge. So I've already done that for my other piece. So you can see these are going opposite directions because this is your left and right foot. If they both look the same, you're gonna end up with two left feet. So I have that ready and now we're ready to do the elastic. And it's optional whether or not you want to do the elastic, it does make the booties fit a little better I think. It's not totally necessary. I've made all of my kids pairs with and without elastic and we're happy with them either way. So it's really up to you. So the elastic is going to start and stop half an inch in from this bottom edge. And you can really just eyeball this but if you want to mark it precisely you can go ahead and mark half an inch, and this is a washable marking pen. That's why I'm just marking right on top of my fabric. And then the top of the elastic casing goes one inch down from the top edge. So I'm just gonna draw a line right across here. And then you'll sew a second line three eighths of an inch below that one. So I'm gonna go sew um, my elastic casing and then I'll show you how to put the elastic through. So I'm just going to be stitching right here and right here. You're not going to sew across the ends yet or you won't be able to get the elastic in. I have the casings on for the elastic so I just top stitched on my marked lines through both layers of fabric. The elastic is going to go in between the outer fabric and the lining so you won't be able to see it on the inside of the booty. So I cut my elastic using the little chart in the pattern with the recommended length going to attach it to a safety pin. I like to start on this end because it's a little more difficult to get it into. I just think it's easiest to do this side first. So you're going to 
scoot the safety pin up there and wiggle it into the casing. And then just scoot it along. And you want to pull slowly so that you don't accidentally pull the end of the elastic too far through. So just keep slowly pulling it along until you get the end of the elastic at the end of the casing. I can feel my elastic is right here. So I just need to pull it a little bit further and wiggle it till it's flat. Okay, so the end of my elastic, I can feel it is right here now. So I'm gonna go top stitch this end in place so that I don't accidentally lose it. Okay, I got that end of the elastic sewn down and my safety pin I can feel is right here. So now I'm just gonna keep pulling. You can see it's starting to snug up a bit. And you can go ahead and move your safety pin down into the end of the strap, that's fine. So once you have the safety pin moved past the end of your casing, I can feel the end of my elastic is right here. So now I'm gonna go sew it down. Now if you know you're sewing for a really skinny kiddo or someone with you know, slim ankles, maybe you're gonna wanna make your elastic a little snugger or you might wanna make it a little looser. If you're sewing for a baby with some adorable chunky ankles, you don't want it to be too tight on them. So the pattern has a recommendation, but it's up to you. So I've got my safety pin here. I'm gonna go sew this down across the end of my casing. The elastic is sewn down on both ends now. So now you just need to reach up in there and get your safety pin back out. You don't wanna leave that inside the booty. So you can just turn it kind of inside out and grab that out of there. So now the elastic's on and we're ready to move on to the next Step, which is going to be attaching it to our outer sole. So we've got our main, this is our outer sole, and then we have a sole lining, which I'm using Sherpa for mine. So you wanna match up the heel notch, which is the double notch, it'll be the narrower end. So match those two notches up. And if you're using leather or like tough tech, I like to use clips instead of pins so I don't poke a hole in my fabric. So put those notches first, and then you'll just keep working your way around the sole. So now I'm gonna go sew this using a quarter inch seam allowance, and this is gonna form the back half of our booty. The back piece is now sewn on to the heel of the booty, so I'm ready to attach the toe. So I wanna just sort of tuck this up, fold it out of the way. This is gonna go right on top. So line up the notches at the top, and then just keep working your way around. And these are gonna overlap about three quarters of an inch. It'll vary some depending on the size. So you can see this front piece is just gonna overlap the back piece. Going around both sides. Now I'm gonna go sew this together. Now, if you didn't care about lining the inside of your booties, if you were using a soft fabric for the outside, if these were for a baby and you were using fleece or something, you could just sew this on and then be done. But I'm gonna sew this on and then attach the sole lining and that will enclose all the seams, which gives a really nice finish. The front is attached, so now we're ready to add the sole lining. So you need to just Flatten this down as best as you can, and you're gonna add the sole lining right on top. So you want the right side, so that's my fluffy side, facing down. It's like a big sandwich, and it is gonna be kind of puffy, especially if you are using Sherpa or fur for your first pair. It's really best if you use fleece or something a little easier to work with. So I normally pin the very tip of the toe first, and the heel and then work my way around the sides.
And you do need to leave a gap so that you can turn this right side out. I like to leave it up by the toe because then when I hand sew it shut, it's in a part of the booty that you're really not ever going to see when you look at it. So I'm gonna leave my gap right here. So I'll leave kind of a bigger space in between my clips. Just keep working your way around until you get all this all the way in place. You just have to kind of shove the rest of the booty out of the way as you go. Okay, so I have this all clipped together. I'm gonna go sew all the way around. I have all my layers sewn together, so now I'm gonna use my pinking shears to trim my seam allowance. This is gonna really help it lay nicely once we turn it right side out. And I like to trim from this side because I can see a little better. That Sherpa is so thick and fluffy that on the other side, it's kind of hard to see where my seam is. And I don't wanna accidentally snip right through where I've sewn. Okay, so I have this all trimmed, and really the closer you trim to your seam allowance, the better. You're just more comfortable, and you can get nice round toe when you turn it right side out. Okay, so I left the gap right here. And you know, the bigger the gap you leave, the easier they are to turn right side out, but you also have more hand sewing to do, so you'll have to kind of experiment to see how much space you wanna leave. I'm just going to turn this. Okay. So when you turn it, this is the inside of my slipper. You can see, here's my little hole. I just need to hand sew shut. So you're just going to sew this shut with a needle and thread. And you know, it's really not going to be that visible, so if you're not that great at hand sewing, don't worry about it, because it's somewhere in the booty that no one is ever going to see unless they turn it inside out. So you'll just hand sew that shut, and then turn the booty right side out. You can see how cute it is. And then the last thing you need to do is add your snaps or Velcro. And the pattern has a little um, dot marked right on it to show where you want to put your snaps on both the strap and on the, your back piece. So you'll just put one here and one here and add it and these are good to go. And I'm going to show you one more little trick and um, an alternate option for sewing the booties. If you don't want to deal with having to make the sandwich with the sole and the sole lining, but you do want it to be double layer. What you can do is put these wrong sides together. So this is my outer sole and my sole lining. Put them wrong sides together, baste around the outside edge, and then just treat it as one piece. So when you sew your uh, back piece on, you'll sew that just like that. And then you'll sew the toe on just like this and then turn it right side out and you'll be done. You will have a seam right here instead of it being totally enclosed. You'll have a seam on the inside of the booty. But if you don't care about that, that is a quicker and easier option to making these. I hope you guys have fun sewing these. This is the Blitzen Booties pattern from Peekaboo Pattern Shop.